Hello, welcome to Oak Ridge First Cumberland Presbyterian Church's virtual Sunday school option. I'm Patricia Pace, and we like to call this the Not So Sunday Sunday School. You don't have to watch it on a Sunday, and it won't be recorded on a Sunday, but it is available starting 8 a.m. each Sunday. And we are finishing up our last lesson on spiritual disciplines, and we're going to be talking about remaining connected to Christ's work and body. Um. So I brought to you, and this, these are verses in John that we've heard before, and oftentimes Jesus is referred to the vine and we're the branches. So you think about this particular plant, I've torn off a piece of plant here at our house. What would happen if this just fell off and had no soil to go to? It wasn't connected to the plant. Would it produce fruit? Would it produce a flower? Probably not. It's going to end up withering and dying similar to this right here, becoming dried out and not productive for what its purpose is. So we're going to keep that in mind when we go through this lesson about remaining connected to Jesus and how important it is to stay connected to the vine. So I always have a PowerPoint that I share to help us go through the lesson. And... myself out of here. Okay, so we have, um, this is our church's Sunday school lesson for 228-21, and we take our lessons from Lifeways Bible Studies for Life, and we are finishing up spiritual disciplines becoming more like Jesus. And at the end of this, I'll talk a little bit more about what next uh, segment will be. So we're going to talk about joining God's work. And this is going to be from John 15, 1 through 8. And the point is, believers are to join God's work in both the church and the world. So thinking about task, our question, icebreaker question, when is a task look bigger than your ability to get it done? Have you ever been overwhelmed by some type of work that you were assigned to do. I'm going to share a story about um, a man in India, and I cannot pronounce his name, but he is from a village in India, and he became very discouraged and upset because his village had no water source, and farmers were struggling to get water to their fields. So the village was located in a part of India that doesn't get a lot of rainfall and is plagued a lot with drought. So young people were leaving the village in search of other jobs because farming was so difficult there. So this man decided he was gonna solve the village's water problem and he was gonna dig a canal uh, and bring water back to the village. And so he would do it working by himself using traditional hand tools. And he finished digging his canal last fall, fall of 2020. And it took him more than two decades to build the canal that's four feet wide, three feet deep, and it covered about three miles. So now, because of his work, village farmers have the water that they need for crops. And the village headman said that the villagers called him mad at first when he started the project. Kind of makes me think about Noah, you know, building an ark. People thought he was crazy. Um, so he thought he was mad when he started to, they thought he was mad when he started to do his project and bring water back, but he did accomplish what seemed to be impossible in getting that canal done. I had a lot of patience, this man too. Uh, so when has a task looked bigger than your ability to get it done? Have you ever done a task that you didn't think you'd be able to get it done? So let's, let's start with a word of prayer here. Dear God, please help us to understand the importance of joining in your mission to the church and the world and that no task is impossible as long as we remain connected to you. And thank you for entrusting us with this task. So we're gonna be looking at John 15, some verses through there. And John 15, uh, we talked about before, uh, they often are referred to as the farewell discourses, and that's chapters 13 through 17 are considered the farewell discourses. His, Jesus's final um, 
final time on earth before his crucifixion. So on the night of his arrest, Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples. And during that time, he instructed them on a variety of topics. And so one of Jesus's points that he was emphasizing was that those who loved him would keep his commandments. And that was John 14, 15. And as he explained, the only way that the disciples could do this, the only way we could do this, is by staying connected to him, their source of power for living as faithful disciples. So read this section here, one through three, to yourself. So Jesus often refers to himself as the vine. Um, and this is a very, uh, I guess, a common verse that we've heard of. And I want to kind of bring out the word prune, about pruning. And I'm not a big gardener, but uh, George does most of the uh, plant work around here. But the purpose of pruning is not to take away from a fruit tr a flower or fruit trees or bushes beauty, but to enhance it. And so thinking about pruning as far as Christians, it's an enhancement for us. It's not a punishment, but a reward because we know we're going to grow from it. And God is the vine dresser, the farmer, the pruner, who prunes the life of everyone who lives in Christ and bears the fruit of Christ. So as we're connected, we know that he cares about us if he prunes us. So it's spiritual pruning enhances spiritual growth, and it removes whatever is inhibiting spiritual growth. So just like when you prune a flower, when you prune a bush, when you prune a plant or a tree, you know, we're taking off a part of that, a piece of that uh, plant or life so that it can grow more. So, you know, in, of course, now pruning is not without pain. So things that can help us doesn't necessarily mean it's always not painful or without pain. Think about if you um, had a leg that was full of gangrene infection and that leg had to go, it had to be amputated. That would hurt, but it saves your life. So there's good that comes from it. So I think a lot of times, you know, as you grow as a Christian, as I've grown as a Christian, um, we don't, I like pain avoid, avoidance. I do not like to go through pain, so I'll avoid it. But sometimes and oftentimes spiritual pruning can be painful. And as Christians, we shouldn't be surprised that it's painful because we do have the promise of freedom from pain and suffering when we're in glory with, with Christ. But pain and suffering are part of the present time. And it's part of a, the word sanctification, becoming more like Christ. Um, and so really where the pain comes in is when we don't really want to give up whatever's inhibiting our growth. And boy, have I been there before. Um, hanging on to things that I think are good for me um, that are not. Uh, there's a great quote, uh, Toby Mack, I don't know if you know him, he's a Christian artist and he's gone through some difficult, tragic times in his life. He's lost a son, uh, but, um, you know, every loss is not a loss. And, um, you know, sometimes we have to let go of things in order to make space for what God has that's good for us. So, um, Christians, we don't like to be pruned any more than children like to receive shots. Have you ever been, you know, as I've taken Claire, she's grown older into uh, the pediatricians. And sometimes you can hear a kid, they're giving up a good little fight when they have to have a shot or a vaccination. And sometimes you think they're getting the best of the doctor. But just like that, we, we have pain avoidance. So we don't want to necessarily go through that. But whenever the Lord prunes us, we do lose a part of ourselves, habits, attitudes, thoughts, uh, but it's not losing who we are necessarily, but it's changing who we are so we can be more like Christ. So how does the word of God 
out of scripture, cleanse or prunes the believer. So the word of God reveals true thoughts and attitudes. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and effective and sharper than a double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of souls and spirits, joints and marrow. It's able to judge the intentions and the heart. So by reading scripture, God's word that's living, it's not an archaic book that's not true to today, but it can reveal, unveil really what our true thoughts and attitudes are. The word of God reflects either obedience or disobedience. James 1, 22 to 24 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at a face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. So as we hear the word of God, we can see our obedience, but also our disobedience becomes evident as we study and learn the scripture. And we need to not only hear it and acknowledge and understand it, but to do the word of God, to obey the word of God. And the third, the word of God sets the sinner free. And James 1.25 says, but the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it, it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works. This person will be blessed in what he does. So as Jesus spoke to the disciples, they heard and they believed, and it was his word that began to cleanse them. So the, us reading the scripture will help prune us, help take away the old so that the things that are inhibiting our spiritual growth so we can be more like Christ. So what are some things that God expects us to produce? Well, you know, I think he wants us to further his kingdom. So helping to share his, his, uh, the gospel and his truth. Um, production can be through acts of service, uh, becoming more like the character of Jesus. And you think about the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of those are things that are characters of Jesus that as we produce and we remain connected in God and divine Jesus that we will begin to naturally produce those things. So John 15, one through three, lasting truths. Jesus, no one else is the true vine. God knows those who belong to him and will separate those hanging on with no genuine connection. We don't want to end up being a withering branch. God knows who belongs to him and will prune those who know him to bear more fruit. So it's a reward to be pruned. I know it's kind of a hard concept uh, to think about pain as a reward, but it, when we move through that, then we know and we become more like Christ. So now we're going to look at, not only does he expect us to produce spiritual fruit, we're going to see that believers produce spiritual fruit through their relationship with Jesus. So read this section to yourself. So when you truly have a relationship with Jesus, it's just natural that spiritual fruit is produced. And Jesus admonished his disciples here in saying, remain in me, as I also remain in you. So thinking about the word, the Greek term remain, it has the meaning of continue, abide, or stay. So just like that branch that I showed you can't have life and produce fruit without being connected to the vine, Jesus' disciples cannot grow and produce spiritual fruit unless they remain connected to him. Same thing for us. We have to remain connected. So what does it look like to remain in Jesus on a daily basis? Well, that's where part of your spiritual disciplines that we've been talking about come into play. Practicing those spiritual disciplines, prayer, scripture, um, I think service, 
also is a way that we can remain in Jesus on a daily basis and gratitude, looking at what Jesus has provided, what promises he continues to fulfill for us, help us to remain. And then also examining and looking at our hearts and turning away from sin. And sometimes we have to do that on a daily basis, uh, or we do have to do it on a daily basis, but some sins we really have to uh, deny ourselves and pick up our cross and go every day. Um, so remaining in Jesus on a daily basis is intentional. So lasting truths in John 15, four through five, those who are not connected to Christ will drive and produce no fruit. Jesus is the life-giving vine who produces spiritual fruit in our lives. We remain connected to Jesus by trusting in him to produce his life in us. So now we're going to see that God is glorified as we produce spiritual fruit. And um, the Westminster uh, Catechism, the Shorter Catechism, what's the chief end of man to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Um, so John 15, six through eight, read that to yourself. So when we produce spiritual fruit, acts of service, all the uh, fruits of the spirits that we talked about, um, ministering and sharing the gospel to others, bringing others into the fold, uh, having personal growth, all of those things as believers, when we have those things, we glorify God. And then that helps point others to him. So in the personal study guide from this week, they gave the example of during the first quarter, of Super Bowl 44, Indianapolis Colt kicker Matt Stover pointed to the sky when he made a 38-yard field goal. And you see a lot of times uh, football players or athletes that will do that. They'll gesture with the finger pointed towards the sky as an um, acknowledgement to God. So a lot of athletes show that similar gratitude to God for their success. But this same kicker in the fourth quarter with the game on the line, he missed a 51-yard field goal attempt. But then he again pointed to the sky to heaven. So recognizing the significance of that gesture, one of the announcers noted that Stover was a spiritual man, grateful for divine blessing in success and failure, victory and defeat. So by him pointing to God, he was acknowledging that he is dependent on him who gave him the ability and the opportunity. And so whether he misses the field goal or he makes the field goal, he is still dependent. We still need God on our best day or on our worst day, the same amount. Because we, we are dependent on him who gives us all our abilities and our opportunities. And so God is glorified, not just because fruit is produced, but because the branches depend on him, that we depend on him and allowing others to see our dependence on him glorifies him. And when we produce the spiritual fruit, we glorify God and prove that we're his disciples. And as we live for Christ, we'll bear fruit and God will be glorified. Verse eight, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So if you look at verse seven, Jesus promised that those who remain in him may ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. So I want to kind of point out, because this is not kind of like Aladdin's lamp uh, type thing here. So you have to look at the words to be understood in the light of what he's already stated. So this prayer to God is predicated, dependent on the believer remaining in Jesus and Jesus remaining in the believer. That, inner de that dependence on having Jesus in us and is staying connected. And so this process of sanctification or growth into greater and greater Christ-likeness is not immediate, but it's gradual. And it takes place over a person's lifetime. So staying connected throughout your lifetime 
so that you can become more Christ-like. So as we mature, we're going to know God better. We're going to know what his will is and over time. And as this, as this happens, our prayers, our desires, our wishes become more aligned with God's will and purposes. So what God desires is what we desire. And so we're praying in accordance to God's will and purposes, not our own selfish desires that whatever we wish, it'll be done. But it's because we're remaining in Jesus and he in us, then um, our wish really is what God wants. So thinking about how we fill our lives with all these commitments of time, family, and these are good commitments, could be sports if you have sports in your life or community events or even religious activities. So what's the purpose of it all? Sometimes we fill our lives with these things and our time with these things because we want to have that sense of purpose. God calls all of us, all of us people, well, first to repent and then to place their faith in Jesus Christ. So then we become his disciples. And as his disciples, God desires that we dedicate our lives to his purposes for his glory. So our time commitments, family, sports, community events, religious activities, as long as it's for his glory and brings glory to him, that's okay. Um, but we have to remain depending on and remaining in him living lives of obedience and proclaiming the gospel. We, and through those things, obedience and sharing the word and love, we find our purpose. Lasting truths in John 15, six through eight. Those who do not produce spiritual fruit are proving they are not connected to the vine. Those who are connected to Jesus and his word is remaining. And his word is remaining in them, have access to God in prayer. And God is glorified as believers walk in discipleship and produce spiritual fruit. Okay. All right. So last of the spiritual disciplines, remaining connected to Christ so we can further glorify him. Um I learned a lot through this. I learned a lot, you know, I think about pruning and about, I don't like pain and, but it's important to go through that and to analyze your heart and, and see, are you aligned with God's will and purposes? Because we can plug along and do great things and, and, and do things for the Lord, but we, we have to have that analysis and evaluation. So we are going to be starting on a new series called Essentials of Christianity and so we'll be talking about resurrection and sin and Jesus and different things and kind of getting to the basics of what Christianity is. It's a seven week series. So hopefully you'll be able to join then. And uh, I know I will be, I have learned so much from these Bible studies, probably more than anybody else, I'd say. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity. So we will end in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for being connected to us and remaining in us and seeking us so we can be connected. And we ask that you help us to evaluate ourselves so that we can be pruned and we can produce more spiritual fruit for your glorification. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, no snow this week, but lots of rain. Um, and we will see you next week. Have a good one.